Welcome to our next tutorial of Quick Surface. This tutorial I will be speaking about these two commands, Fill Surface and Blend Surface, and what they are used for. In general, these commands they work on curves. So what I'm going to do is just to create quickly just a simple 3D sketch on this uh, mesh. I will just pick very roughly the, the shapes. Like here I'm trying just to create this uh, outline of the shape. I'm not precise, as you can see, the anchor points lie on the mesh, but not the whole spline. So once I'm done with this, <coughs> what I can do, I can probably just go and modify it. Let me just double click here to insert the point and snap it. Slightly improve the position and uh, have something more valuable. Once I'm ready, what I can do is just go to Fill Surface command. The main idea is that you select the boundaries of the surface, of the fill surface, and it will generate a surface for us. I can just start clicking and pick the different side. You can always click on this button to reset and restart. Also, we have an option to select edge chain. This means that if I click here, it automatically will select all the connected. As you can see now, the software created a surface here. This surface has nothing to do with the mesh. It only uses the curves that you have created and it goes through the curves. Also, you can see that it doesn't follow our intent. So what I can do, is let me just accept this and hide this for now. I will go back and edit my 3D sketch. And here I can probably create some internal curves like this one. Double click. Then I can go back and edit my fill surface. As we have the boundaries, we can also specify the internal curves. If I pick this one, the surface will try to go through my other surfaces. In this way, you can just create the uh, surfaces very close to what you need. There are some options here which we will explore a little bit uh, later. If you have a sketch which is purely planar, if I try this, you see it doesn't work, it doesn't give any result because it's not planar, but you can create the planar surfaces. And also you can create untrimmed surface. So this means that it's not um, defined by the edges. It's still the same surface, but it's uh, outlined more than what we need. It can be useful in some cases. Let me just uh, accept this for now and see what else we can do. If I hide the mesh, I can always just go back to the 3D sketch or create another one. Let's create another one 3D sketch here. I will pick these points which are here. We'll just create these uh, curves here and press OK. If we try now to create another uh, fill surface, it will allow us to um, close this gap. In this case, I don't need to pick the select chain. I just pick this one and this one, and you see that it kind of closes my shape and press OK. Let me hide this so you can get a better understanding of what's going on. Let's try to do on the other side. I need this 3D sketch here. I will go and make a fill surface command, and this will close. And finally, if I want to create a solid, Perhaps I don't need a 3D sketch anymore. Perhaps I can just go and fill the surface here. I in this case, I can just make the selected chain. You see, it took everything. Now you can play with the surface degree. It can be two or it can be three. You don't see a big difference here, but in some cases you can see how it uh, behaves. So this is generally how we understand of the fill surface command. A little bit more on another example is uh, something like this one. If we have an object which is created as a dome here, I used the loft command of these uh, multiple sections and created my loft surface. What I can do is I can go and fill the surface. You see it's kind of a flattish. What you can do, you can pick one of the edges and specify whether it needs to be smooth or contact. 
if I try smooth, you can see how it bends here because this is in contact, so I can just need to make this smooth also. And when you're done, you can get a nicer smooth surface here, which you can see on the screen how it approximates and how it goes through. Let's go back to our previous example to show a little bit more. I pre-selected here a pre-created uh, small sketch and we will make the exercise again. I'm getting the um, shape. If I click here, it just takes everything, but that's not my goal. I will restart. I would like to take this area only, example here, and it will create my surface. Let's create this. The next step would be to create another one. I pick this, and now it will pick the edge from the underlying surface. And what I need to do, if I accept now, you can, I need to flip this and analyze the zebra. You can see that this is how they contact here. You know, the continuity is not preserved. What I need to do is just go and edit my this uh, fuel surface and here I will say I want this to be smooth transition. Press OK. And if we analyze now the zebra stripe, you can see that it preserves the uh, continuity between the two surfaces. So this is the, um, the way how the fuel surface command works, but in some cases it can be a way much more powerful for what your needs. Quickly drawing the sketch. I'm not going to be precise because this is uh, just for you to understand. As you can see, this is uh, my boundary uh, shape here, which I'm trying to create as a rectangular patch and click here. In this situation, I don't really care too much about how close I am to the uh, underlying mesh. What I'm going to do, we'll repeat again the fill surface, pick this, select the chain and fill everything. Now, what we have here is the option which is called on scan data. If you press this, the software automatically will get the underlying surface from the mesh, which is very similar to fit surface command, but does this automatically. And then we'll take these boundary curves and we'll project them onto my shape. So that's why they do not match. Why? Because these um, boundary curves, they just define my shape but the actual surface is defined from the underlying scan data and these, surfaces, these curves are projected onto my result mesh. What I mean with this is this is my final result here. What I can do is, for example, I can just go and modify this a little bit for the demonstration when I press OK. You will see that it generates a different shape. So this can be quite useful and you can see the quality of the underlying surface. What else you can do is that in some cases you have some options here. It's the number of UMV, how close you want, you will get to the underlying mesh. In this case, probably I can put it 20 so it can get as close as possible to the, to the mesh. You can see what I got as a result now. If you compare, you see how good the quality it is. And at the same time, if I analyze the zebra, it's still very good. To finalize the options, we have something whether we need to smooth the surface or not. If we turn off without smoothing, it will start to get closer to the underlying um, mesh, but the sh quality of the zebra then will be slightly different. You can see here the kinks and that it's not as good as we would like it to be. I hope this is uh, useful. Um, the next thing that we are working on is the blend surface command. It's uh, designed for um, creating shapes which are um, from two different surfaces that if we want to blend together very quickly, let me just uh, create another shape here, like this one, for example, here. And we 
define another surface. You can experiment yourself on your real applications. Going to fill surface command and create. It's uh, using the curves only, so that's why I would say I want it on scan data. So it's perfect now. I don't need a 3D sketch. What we can do here is uh, to apply our blending surface. It requires two curves from two faces, like this one, and it will create a blend surface between the two surfaces. So this is normally how you use the t these features. I hope this is useful. Thank you for watching.